So in my last video, I talked about the new perspectives you need to take on end-to-end -end data management to get the most out of AI and especially to drive towards personalization. I want to shift now and with that background about data, talk about some of the organization and operating issues that I'm seeing as I work with clients who are moving towards improving the personalization that they can deliver. So one of the most important things that comes to mind, which actually parallels the data issue, is that customer experiences often require integration. They are not necessarily coming just from one part of the organization, but a truly integrated view and management of the customer requires different groups to not just have data brought together, but to literally work together. So for example, in a B2B setting, if let's say you have a software company that is selling to small companies and you've got salespeople who are out there, possibly from channel partners who are going out and calling, those channel partners cannot just simply rely on instinct in today's day and age. They've got to have better informed understanding of who their customer is, what's key information about a sales play based on a likely profile, based on the history with that customer, what they have bought before, what, uh, how many licenses they have, how they're using the software, what is the price that they're paying, what is their technology infrastructure, all of that. That data all has to come together from a number of different sources, informed also by marketing, who is bringing insights into differences across the psychographics of segments, different verticals. That has to come together. And so organizations that are set up in a very siloed way find it hard to bring together the ability to deliver integrated services to customers, integrated experiences. And so what we're seeing now is new kinds of organization models where you've got a leader, could be from the product side, could be from the marketing side, could be from the sales side, but somebody who's in charge of a customer segment and who is orchestrating all of the different pieces that need to come together to define how the experience is going to manifest itself with that customer segment. And so they're going to draw upon a number of different capabilities, some of which may be dedicated to servicing that segment, some of which may be sharing time across other segments, but we're seeing more, more opportunities to create that more general management view of a customer audience. And with that, you can have somebody who is really thinking through the performance of that segment, the data, the kinds of experiences that you need to deliver. You can also start thinking about what do we need to learn about that segment? What do we have to find out in order to better feed our AI or just simply learn more about what their needs are and what we should be delivering and how do we stay ahead of it? And so somebody on top is likely to have a better understanding of what you need to learn about that customer. Now, combined with the notion of integration is the issue of speed. Speed is paramount because two things are going on that require speed. First off, when you get a signal about a customer, let's say a B2B customer is all of a sudden in some kind of acquisition battle. Um, they're possibly going to get acquired. That's a signal that could mean taking some kind of action. Or a customer all of a sudden usage drops. You have to be able to move quickly. You have to be able to get the signals through the different parties who need to come together and act 
against that customer. Again, it requires a much more integrated, almost pod-like model of having people able to work together to mobilize against that signal. But the other issue for speed comes back to a point I've made repeatedly, and especially in the last one, is that in order to learn more about the segment and get more data about them, you've got to be constantly testing things. And faster cycles mean more tests and more opportunity to gather data and learning. If, for example, it takes you six, maybe even 12 weeks to get an email out the door, and I have clients where I've walked in the door and that's how long it takes to get an email through all of the channels. You are not going to be learning much in a very quick way from sending out that email. And by the time it goes out, by the time you measure it, there's not a lot you can do. But if you can cut that time down to less than two weeks, then you're in a mode of much, much faster cycle time, more agility, much better ability to constantly learn and grow that knowledge base. Speed matters. And it's shocking how much time is taken up by handoffs, by trying to set up meetings, by approvals, by unclear accountability in an organization. And again, that's where having an integrated team that is clear on who does what set against a particular goal of growing the performance of a customer segment, working together to constantly figure out how they can be tighter. And eventually, and I'll get into this in another video, using agile principles applied to marketing and customer management to be able to constantly move. It takes integration to make speed happen and speed is absolutely essential. Too many times when I work with clients and they think about personalization, it's very easy for them to get caught up in the data and the technology. And as I talked about in an earlier video, the data issues are incredibly important, but the operating issues always prove to be the key that drives success or not. It means really thinking through what are the ways we are structured and operating that cause all of those unnecessary handoffs and are people aligned and accountable for performance. Imagine if you had a team that had all the different functions that were necessary to drive 20% growth in a particular segment and everyone is being held to that standard of accountability. They are all aligned against that, even if they're in support functions. Everyone has to work together to get that goal to happen. And you let them work on it. And you let them constantly try new things, test things, get things out the door, figure out how to do it faster, figure out how to measure and get the, res the, the results back. All of that in an autonomous tightly knit group driven towards a goal. That's a very different model of organizational management than the typical hierarchical branch. The other thing that you start to find when you do that is you're going to want people who can do more than one thing. If you have too much specialization, it requires too many people to get something done. And usually it's fractions of more different people. So that means more handoffs, more meetings, more opportunities for errors, more lack of understanding of maybe what the goal is in the spec in the first place. If you've got fewer people who can do more, who can be more multifunctional athletes, then you've got the opportunity for tighter capability. And I think in the era of AI, when we have to realize that every body in your organization is not just a person, but it's a person with an assistant from AI helping them, a robot by their side, they should be able 
to get more done, their span of capability should increase. And that should allow them in a tighter team to take on more responsibility and be able to get things done faster. And that's, again, another part of the whole equation is thinking about the cross and upskilling of talent, not only to use AI, but then to use that AI to be able to take on a broader role. So as we think about organization structures, we have to think through, are we set up in a way that's too chopped up? Are we not making it easy to get things out the door, react faster? Are we hindering our ability to test and learn in fast cycles because of the way things are fragmented and set up? Can we align accountability across the team smaller team that has a broader range of responsibilities for the team overall and for each of the individual players? And are we starting to think about our people as being more broadly capable because of the support and assistance that they can now get from AI? So this is a different model that I'm starting to see a number of companies moving towards. I think you can start asking the questions within your own organization, you know, in one year from now, how can we dramatically increase our cycle time? Can we double it? Can we get things out the door at least twice as fast? How are we thinking about the limitations of our people if they're too narrow in their specializations? Is that going to put them at risk? because AI can do some of those specialty things? Or is it that we're starting to help people broaden the range of what they can do? I think it's a very exciting time. I think it's not just a question of AI driving efficiency and therefore it's putting jobs at risk. There will be jobs at risk. I have no doubt about that. But I also think it's an opportunity to help people broaden what they do and have dramatically more impact. So again, as in the data discussion I talked about in my last video, I think it's time to start a discussion from an organizational standpoint of whether we are aligned for the integration, the speed, and I'm also going to add the capability expansion that we're going to need to drive to get the most out of AI and make personalization happen.